All right, everybody, let's talk about lesson 18 velocity. So one way uh, to move sprites in game lab is with the counter pattern, which you've learned. Uh, for example, sprite.x gets sprite.x plus one. That should look very familiar to you at this point. Uh, that pattern moves a sprite by one pixel each frame of the draw loop. This pattern is so common that sprites have a velocity x property that does this for you. So here's what we're going to learn. We're going to learn about a new block called sprite velocity x. <clears throat> and we also will learn about sprite velocity y. So we're going to drag the sprite velocity x block directly below where the sprite was created. We're going to write the name of the sprite in the block. We're going to assign the sprite velocity x property a value of 1 and then we're going to run the code and see what happens. Okay, so have the program show me where to put the block. Right there, so we're going to go sprite velocity x, and we're talking about fish. And I'm going to put a value of 1 and run it. And there you have it. So it's a one block wonder rather than three blocks to get the motion. So let's try rerunning it with a different value. Let's try 5. Whoa, what did you notice? Very cool. Da -da -da! Alrighty. Let's watch this video. <laughs> I'm originally from South Carolina, and now I'm all the way over in California in Silicon Valley. And here, software is all about optimism. It's not just a means to an end. It's this thing that gives us hope to solve every problem that the world potentially has. Moving your sprites around the screen means using a very familiar pattern, the counter pattern. This pattern lets you add to the position or rotation of your sprite on each tick of the draw loop. So it looks like it's moving or rotating at different speeds. Here's an example we've seen before. Using the counter pattern with the sprites X property, we can control a sprites velocity, how fast it's moving in a particular direction. If we add a larger amount to the X position, the sprite looks like it's moving faster. Adding a smaller amount makes the sprite look like it's moving more slowly. You've been using the counter pattern to control a sprite's velocity a lot. In programming, when the same pattern happens many times, you can often hide those details inside another block. In our example, that block is velocity x. The velocity x property hides the details of the counter pattern that changes the sprite's x position. Whatever number you assign to this property will automatically be added to your sprite's x position on the next tick of the draw loop. This program creates a sprite, gives it an animation, and then draws it on the screen. Now let's give that sprite a velocity by setting its velocity x property to 1, just once at the beginning of the program. When we rerun the program, we see that the sprite's position is updated. Under the hood, the velocity x property and the counter pattern are used to update the sprite's position, moving it across the screen. The other new properties that work in a similar way are velocity y, which controls velocity in the vertical direction, and rotation speed, which controls how fast the sprite rotates. The under the hood behaviors of velocity x, velocity y, and rotation speed are all things you've tackled in previous lessons. Now, we get to let those blocks handle the details for us and explore new ways of moving sprites on the screen. All right, so let's get into it. So as he said, there's nothing new about this. It's just a new way of approaching a similar situation. So in bubble three, we're going to practice moving down. Here's a feather um, that should float down the screen. If velocity x makes the sprite move right, you can find, can you find the block 
that will make the feather move down. All right, so here's what we have to do. Do this. Find the block that will make the feather sprite go down the screen and use it outside the draw loop. So that is something that's new this time around. Before we had practiced putting our movements inside the function draw. With a velocity block, we no longer have to do that. We can put it right below where we've created the sprite at the top of the screen, or at the top of our workspace. So if X goes left and right, Y goes up and down. So we've got feather, velocity Y, and I'm going to give it a 1. And let's see what happens. And there you have it. The feather slowly floats down the screen. Da -da -da! And as always, you are welcome to pause anytime if I'm going too fast for you. So for the next one, we're going to practice rotation speed. You can use rotation speed to make your sprites spin. If you want your sun to rotate by two degrees each time it's drawn, you can use sun.rotationSpeed gets two before the draw loop after you create your sprite. Do this. Make the sun rotate by three degrees each time using the rotation speed block. And let's show me where. All right, so right there below line two. So I'm going to grab a sprite.rotation speed, drag it over, and use the label sun. And they said three degrees, so I'm going to put three in this spot right here and hit run. And there we have it, a nice sun rotation by three degrees. Pause if you need, hit finish if you don't. Da -da -da! All right, bubble five, controlling speed. We use the rotation speed outside the draw loop to make your sprite rotate when your program started. You can also use rotation speed inside the draw loop to change the speed of the sprite during the game. For example, a sprite can start rotating when the user presses the space bar and it will keep rotating until it's told to stop. Do this. Look at the if statement inside the draw loop to check that checks whether the space bar is being pressed. And show me where. All right, so now we know it's line nine. Use the rotation speed block to make the color wheel start spinning when the user presses the space bar. Okay, so we're going to be using lines eight and nine. So if key down space, then we're talking about rotation speed. Okay. Then I'm going to grab a sprite.rotation speed. We're using the label wheel. So I'm going to type that in there. And I'm going to give it a value of three. All right. So there's the wheel. Nothing's happening. I'm now going to push the space bar. And you notice the wheel starts to spin. Pause if you need. Hit finish if you don't. Da -da -da! Alrighty, so level six, changing velocity with position. One advantage to using the velocity block inside conditionals, which are if blocks, is that your sprite keeps moving even after the condition stops being true. For example, you only had to press the key once to start the color wheel spinning and it kept spinning forever. The code below uses if statements to make a fish sprite move in different directions. Do this. Look at if statements that check the sprite's position and set its velocity. With your partner, discuss how you think the code will do and write your answer below. Once you have submitted your answer, you can then run the code. So that's my submission. What is the answer? Ha ha ha. So let's take a look at the code and see what we think. So we've got an if fish x is less than zero then the fish animation gets fish right and the fish velocity x gets two well i know positive x makes the things move to the right and then it says if fish is greater than 400 which is the far right of the screen 
then the fish animation is going to change to fish L, and then the fish velocity is going to get a negative 2. So I'm wondering if this fish isn't going to swim back and forth. That's my guess. Go ahead and pause as you type your answer, and then pause when you're ready. All right, well, let's hit run and see what happens. Swim, little fishy, swim. Oh, that's cool. So it actually faces the direction it's swimming. Wow. Wow. This is kind of like ASMR. All we need is some little bubbles in there. Maybe an underwater noise. Cool. All right. Pause if you need. Hit finish if you don't. Da -da -da! Bubble 7. Back and forth. This ball bounces back when it hits the bottom of the screen. Can you make it bounce back when it hits the top of the screen? Do this. Run the code to see how it works. Alright. Ball bounces. Okay. And it disappears. Not okay. Look at how the conditionals and velocity are used to make the ball bounce at the bottom of the screen. Add code to make the ball bounce at the top of the screen. Okay. So the code that makes the ball bounce at the bottom um, looks like line 6 makes it start to move. So line 6 is ball velocity y gets 5. That makes it start its motion in the first place. Then line 9 says if ball y is greater than 380, then ball velocity y gets a negative 5. So this line 10 here forces the ball to go in the opposite direction. All right, so what we've got to do is figure out what our coordinate is up here that we want to use. Now, I'm putting my cursor up here. I want you to look right down here below the show grid when I do that. So if I put my cursor way up here, 10's pretty darn good. How, how about we try 10y? All right, so I'm going to go if, if what? If ball y less than, if ball y less than, and what number did we decide? We decided on 10. If ball y less than 10, and again, you can use any number here, any smaller number that you choose. So if ball y less than 10, what's going to happen? Well, if velocity y5 makes it go down, and velocity y negative 5 makes it go up, what do we want it to do when it gets here? We want it to go down again. Very good. So we're going to use velocity y. Keep the label the same. Label is ball. I'm going to give it back that positive 5. So let's see if our code is written correctly. Here we go. And if I did it right, hey, it came back. Yay. So it was 10. 10 isn't too bad. I probably could have done something a little closer, maybe 12 or 15, maybe even 20. But 10 does a good job. All right, pause if you need to see the lines of code that we added. Otherwise, let's hit finish. Da -da -da! All right, bubble eight, our practice. Let's start with A, and then we'll do B. Controlling speed. For this animation, you'll help the flybot to take off. It should start moving when the spacebar is pressed, and it should continue moving up even after the spacebar is released. Do this. Use an if statement inside the draw loop to check whether the spacebar is pressed. Hold on a second. <coughs> Sorry. Use the velocity y block to make the sprite move up when the user presses the spacebar. Check that your animation behaves the way you'd like. So let's see what's going on. Alright. 
so it doesn't do anything. I've already, oh, looks like I've already done this. Sorry, folks. That's okay. So what did I add? I added an if key down space flybot velocity y gets negative 5. So let's see if that works. And it does. It behaves exactly as it's supposed to. And what we added was line 6 and 7. We added an if statement, a key down space, and a flybot velocity y gets negative 5. So hit pause if you need to. Otherwise, let's hit finish. Da -da -da! Let's take a look at letter B, paintbrush. Dip the paintbrush in the paint. Do this. Use a conditional to send the paintbrush down if the down arrow is pressed. Use a different conditional to send the paintbrush up if it reaches the palette. You will need to check its Y property. Okay, so what do I have when I first start? I have a paintbrush and a palette and no movement. So, up and down has to do with the Y properties. So, I'm going to start with a velocity Y. Keep the label for brush, because that's what I want to move. So brush velocity y, I'm going to give it a value of 5. You guys can choose whatever value you want. I know you speed demons out there, you like to make it go really fast. Okay, so the paintbrush falls, but now I need it to hit the palette and come back up. Now there's a critical point to remember here. The x and y properties of a sprite are from the center of the sprite. So don't think about where the tip of the paintbrush is going to be. Think about where the middle of the paintbrush will be when the tip is in the location that you want it to be. Does that make sense to everyone? I hope so. so I'm going to do this one more time. So it looks to me like I want the paintbrush to bounce back when it's about right there. And right there is about 296. So I'm going to start with that value. So we have an if, if, if what? If brush Y is greater than if brush Y, if brush Y's value. If brush wide's value is greater than, what did I say? 296. 296. If brush wide's value is greater than 296, what do I want to happen? I want it to go in the reverse direction, right? So that's still a, a velocity y. I name it brush. If I use a positive 5 up here, I'm going to use a negative 5 down here. So let's see if I was correct. Oh, let's do it one more time. Pretty close, but I think I could probably do a little closer. So instead of 296, I'm going to go 298. Because I'm, I really want that paintbrush to hit the red before it goes back. So still not quite, so I'm going to go 300. And again, these numbers here are arbitrary. As long as the paintbrush touches the palette, you've satisfied the requirement. But I want it to touch the red. That's pretty darn close. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments. Ha ha ha. All right. If you need to see this any longer, hit pause. Otherwise, let's hit finish. Da -da -da! All right, and now on to the assessment level. And remember, I'm not going to do the assessment level for you. I want to see what you can do on your own. But every now and then, I do offer a hint. So what's going on here? Let me make sure that I am not, I'm not giving away any answers. 
that's not fair. All right, much better. So swimming right and left. The code below should make the fish start moving right once you press the right arrow. Then you should start continually swimming back and forth. You should use conditional statements and the velocity block to make the fish swim. Do this. Look at the three if statements inside the draw loop. Use a sprite velocity x block inside each if statement to make the three following movements. All right. First, if the user presses the right arrow key, move the fish to the right. Next, if the fish gets to the right hand side of the screen, move the fish to the left. Then, if the fish gets to the left hand side of the screen, move the fish to the right. So this is set up so that you have one user input. That's the right arrow key. After that, these other two motions are based off of the position of the sprite. You have to set up your other two ifs so that if the fish reaches the right, it goes left. And if it, if it reaches the left, it goes right. So let's see what they gave you. They gave you an if key down right. So you need to put something in there. Then they gave you an if fish x greater than 400, put something there. And then they gave you an if fish x less than zero, put something there. And the hint that they gave you is that you will be using a velocity block to make the fish swim. And right here they even tell you you're using Sprite Velocity X Block. Sprite Velocity X Block. So, with that, go ahead and hit pause while you work on Lesson 9. And come back when you're ready. Alright, let's take a look at the challenge level. I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint on this challenge level. Bubble A. All right, let's take a look at A, Changing Course. This one is really fun, and once you figure out the pattern, I think you'll have no trouble at all. So it says, study the animation to the right. Notice that the purple alien sprite changes its between X and Y velocities when it is near each corner of the screen. Okay, I want you to notice that flash there. We restart it. So when it reaches the top, it has to go right. And when it reaches over here, it goes down. When it is here, it goes left. And when it's here, it goes up again. So do this. Run the program to understand how it works so far. Add velocity x and velocity y blocks to each conditional to make the alien complete the full circuit. Be careful. If the sprite starts moving diagonally, it might mean it has both X and Y velocity. In the first corner, the alien needs to stop moving up and start moving right. Okay, so the first corner needs to stop moving up and start moving right. So what do I have so far? goes up and then it just disappears. So what I have up here at line one, that's my variable, two, that's my animation, three is a velocity x and they've set it to zero, four is velocity y and they've set it to negative three, that's why the alien is going up. So in this first conditional statement, if alien y is less than 50, that is right up here, right? Where's 50y? Right there's 50y, okay? If alien y becomes less than 50, I need to, remember our hint, stop moving up and start moving right. So I'm gonna go velocity y, because velocity y is what moves it up and down. So alien. Now, up here they started with negative 3. Right here, I'm going to turn it off. 
I'm going to say velocity y gets 0. Now let me test that before I add anything else. Perfect. So he stopped. So he stopped moving up. Now I need to make him start moving right. And that is where I'm going to grab this velocity x block. Put it right there under the y. Use the same label for alien. And because they use a 3 up here, I'm going to use a positive 3 here. Now, why positive? I'm going to use a positive because it's moving to the right. And if you watch down here when I do this, watch down here in this location. As I move my cursor to the right, the x value gets bigger. So that's why I'm using a positive number right here. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so he moves to the right. Now your job is to finish the rest of the puzzle. Keep in mind that each if statement is going to have both a velocity y and a velocity x, and one of them in each one of these if statements, one of those will have a zero value. So we think about it like this. You're going to turn one motion off and turn the other one on. One motion off and turn the other one on. And two of your numbers down here will be a positive. There's one of your positives. And two of your numbers will be negative because you have to go in the opposite direction, up and down, left and right. Okay? Hope that helps. If you need more assistance, ask your partner. Help you each other out. No one uh, programs in a silo. We all work together. And with that, enjoy your lesson 18. And if you correct or finish anything that's already been graded, remember to email me. See ya.